Now, so you know, it's worth saying that I asked them nicely, the organizers, that if I could drive on the stage on this car and start rocking from here. And they actually said it's not possible for security reasons. What I didn't tell them is that actually I have remote control over this car and I can chart, basically start it up and bring Carmageddon on you right now. Uh, okay, I'm messing with you, but, uh, but this is actually the point of me being on this stage. This is the very, very reason of me talking today to you. Because in real life, everybody understands that it's terribly, terribly wrong on many layers, on, on many levels, to drive a car in the audience. Yeah, but it seems that when the software for a car is developed, this is probably not the like, number one in the uh, software developer's priority list to basically work this scenario. And the whole point is maybe it should be. So let's just step back for a second and uh, let me introduce myself, reintroduce myself. Uh, my name is Eugene Cherishnev and I'm working for Kaspersky Lab, which is basically the uh, largest privately held security company. And uh, what we've learned uh, specifically when we started to work with Ferrari as our partners is that last two years something changed very dramatically with the way that cybersecurity works. When we started two years ago, we started to protect not only sponsors, the team, but we started to protect their infrastructure, their cars, their manufacturing, their ERPs, everything, and real, realized that car is a computer riding on diesel or high octane fuel, but it's a computer eventually. And <laughs> I'm sorry. And uh, something that is implemented with Ferrari today is basically a reality for all the car manufacturers within two, three years. And this is exactly what happens. The internet used to be Las Vegas. It's basically what happens in internet stays in internet. It's not the case anymore. And some of you might know probably and might hear that this year during the Black Hat conference, two engineers basically proved that it is possible actually to gain remote control over a car and basically crush it. This is what they did. Uh, just for the show of hands, who heard about it? Well, well, I love to be in the audience today. <laughs> so technically, it's not a theoretical scenario. And what I'm here, does it work? <laughs> What I'm saying is like there is a prediction of 92 million cars being sold next year who are connected to the internet. And I've read the forecast that for 2020, it's something about a quarter of a billion. It means that literally hundreds of millions of lives are theoretically in danger or while we speak here. For this very reason I started with, nobody is starting with security at the core. So we're about the user experience, how fantastic the uh, application or the services looks. Uh, how much value it brings to the customer, but we are not at the core, and this is a problem because, uh, and by the way, it's not only to the car, it's related to the cars. Uh, uh, have you heard about the nuclear plants running on Windows being hacked? Yeah? By the way, it's just freaking me out that the, the nuclear station can be run on Windows, with all the respect to people of, from, from Microsoft being in this audience. <laughs> and this is, this is, this is uh, what we've been struggling with in Kaspersky. We decided to make automotive industry our new startup. This is probably why we are relevant to the Web Summit, because theoretically we're an 18 old company, 80 years old company, but in the core we're a startup, because uh, the difference between your customers being safe in cybersecurity and their lawyers filing for bankruptcy due to the big data breach or something is a matter of split second. That's why we have to be proactive, and that's why uh, I want to share with you several cases uh, and like push you to a very specific decision. Uh, in the port of Antwerp recently, it's just another illustration that critical infrastructures such as cars and nuclear plants and other things, they are freaky. Uh, in the port of Antwerp, there are basically trailers and ships who are being you know, uh, unloaded. And at a certain point, Colombian drug lords realized that it's very, uh, it's almost impossible to, you know, to bring several tons of cocaine or heroin to Antwerp. But then they actually checked, is there any flaws in the critical infrastructure? And it, it, you know what they found? That it can be done. 
So for years, the, the, there were ships coming from Colombia in the port of Antwerp, and there were basically several hackers who, would do, who were doing a very specific thing. They were taking the containers from the ship and putting it simply you know, in the safe zone, past the customs. Nobody was looking at it. Nobody could understand it. When the, you know, when the security experts came to, uh, to the uh, authorities and said, you, you know that there's a problem with your computers and they can basically smog things, they said, we don't understand. Like, go away. And, uh, but this is, this is something that uh, is not related to human lives. So basically, this is a business. But with cars, <sighs> just imagine what would happen if I would do what I, what I said I would. Uh, basically starting this car and driving around the audience. Uh, and the problem is, the main problem here is regulation and the lack of standardization because we in Kaspersky, we want to change something. I bet that a lot of you people in the audience, you want to change something. We don't want to have the cars who drive themselves with, you know, no, with no definition what is right and wrong. We don't want to have insulin pumps that basically can be hacked from, you know, from distance. And those of you who have seen the, uh, what's the series, Homeland. You've seen the, in Homeland, they actually illustrated a very, a very good case the, that it's possible to kill the Vice President of the United States, basically, by uh, hacking his insulin pump. And in order for this conversation to get in, to get in the serious state, uh, we have to work together in, a, in the industry and understand what is the right thing to do and what is the wrong thing to do. Uh, I don't have a solution for you here today. And I'm not here to push you a product or a solution. I'm here to, 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 to put you a very simple idea in your hand that if you consider putting cybersecurity at the core of your, of your enterprise startup, it's, it's not a burden. It shouldn't be perceived as a burden. It's an opportunity, a clear financial opportunity because in years, this would pay off because eventually what you create by being serious about cybersecurity at the core of your startup. You create a unique value proposition for your customers. You create safety for them. And at the end of the game, basically, it's gonna, maybe it's going to pay off in two, three, five, ten years, but you're going to be sure that you are doing the right thing. And honestly speaking, probably, I'm going to just switch to this slide. We in Kaspersky, we're really a very holistic company, whatever you know, opinions there are on the market. And what I'm here to tell you is you can f you're just free to use this email or come uh, through our social media channels or through our PR channel. It doesn't matter. If you have a startup, come to us. We are ready for free with no charge at all, basically to consult you. What is the right approach? What are the potential threat vectors? What are the potential threat scenarios or data breaches for your customers? Because eventually, we feel that this is the only way to go. Because it is never the legislation who starts the dialogue. Usually, they come after when the, you know, the path is set. And right now, I think there is no other way than just you know, start developing things with the right way and then come to the legislation and say, this is the right way to go. Protect it, enforce it, and make it international. Because otherwise, it won't work. And uh, you know, I have actually four minutes to to go. So, but this is basically everything I wanted to tell you. Thank you. <laughs>